Collections Grid. Here we see all the various ways in which you can create responsive grids with Semantic UI. First of all, we have the basic grid that has up to 16 columns. Then we can see that we can arrange this and create different layouts. For example, we can have a grid with equal number of rows. We can have a grid with column count. We can have a grid with column width. We can have a grid with equal width between each column in the row. We can have a grid with equal width and automatic resizing. We can have grid with floated columns, grid with vertically stretched content. We can create pattern grid with vertical and horizontal gutters, or only vertical or only horizontal gutters. We can have a relaxed and very relaxed grid with more spacing between the columns. We can have a horizontal divided grid with these vertical lines here. We can have a vertical divided grid with horizontal lines. We can have a celled grid with borders around each column. We can have an internally celled grid only with borders in the inside of the grid. Then we can define colors for columns or for the entire row. We can have a centered grid. We can have text alignment on the grid, row, and column. We can have vertical alignment on grid or vertical alignment on the column. We can create a doubling grid that will double its amount of columns between different breakpoint sizes. I'll explain that when we get to it. We can have a stackable grid that will stack on mobile devices. We can reverse the order of the grid across different device sizes. We can set the visibility across different device sizes. And finally, we can have a responsive width that will change the amounts of column between different breakpoint sizes. All right, let's get started. In our code editor, I'm in the practice section right here. First, let's create the basic grid. To do that, we have a div tag with the classes UI and grid as our main wrapper. Inside of this, we'll add another div tag with the class column. And inside of this, We'll create our content, which will be a segment with the text column. Of course, this can be anything. You can have a total of 16 columns in one row. So I'll just copy this so we get a total of 16. Here's 4, 8, 12, 16. Let's save this, go to the browser, select the right tab and refresh. Now we see each of our columns. When they're so tiny, of course, they can't keep all the text inside of it. All right, let's continue to the next example, a grid with equal rows. We'll start from scratch again, creating our div tag, this time with the additional classes for and column, so it becomes UI for column grid. This will define the rows to have four column each. So one column will be a quarter of the available width. So now I'll just add the column with the same content as before and the text column. We'll copy this and paste it in three times so we get a total of four. That was one too many. Now we have four, then I'll forgot actually to add a row around this. So if we go up here, we can add the div tag with the class row and we'll nest all of this like so. So we have the UI four column grid and then we have a row containing four columns, each column be a quarter of the available width since we have defined this to be a four column grid. So let's try to remove one down here. So there's only three columns and save, go back to the browser and refresh. Now we see the grid with equal rows and on the second row we only have three. All of our columns is taking up a quarter of the available width. If we resize the window, it will be the same across all sizes. We'll learn about Responsive, great, later. 
Now let's continue to grid with column count. Let's start from scratch again, creating a div tag with the classes UI and grid. And then create a div tag with the classes five column grid. Inside of this, we'll create our column and then our content, the same as before, the segment with the text column. Notice before we defined the column count along with the grid, four column grid. Now we define the column count uh, along with our row. So this was, this was a mistake. It should be row, of course, and not grid. So up here, the four column along with our grid. Here, the five column along with our row class. So we want to have five of these here, two, three, four, five. Then let's copy the code for this row and change it to a four column row and remove one column. Let's paste it in again and change it to a three column row and remove the last column. Let's save, go back and refresh. Now we see we have a grid with column count. We have five columns, four columns and three columns. Whoops, I forgot to erase one more like so. Now we have a three column row. Let's continue to look at the grid with column width. Start from scratch again, creating a div tag with the classes UI and grid. And then we'll add a div tag with the classes eight wide column. This time we won't need the row class that is not necessary in all cases. We'll add the UI segment inside, like so. So we have an eight wide column here. And I'll just paste this in sometimes. Remember that we can have a total of 16 in one row. So our second will be four and then two. and two again. So that would be a total of eight, 12, 14, 16, that equals one row. Then we have 10, three, and three, which equals 10, 13, 16. So this will take up the space of one row. This will take up the space of another row. So let's see how this look in the browser. Now we see the grid with the column width defined. So here we have the 8, 4, 2, 2, and then the 10, 3, and 3. Let's continue to look at grid with equal width. We'll define our main wrapper with the classes UI equal width grid. Then inside we'll add the div tag with the class row. And then a div tag with the class column and then our content which is the segment again like so now we'll copy this so we have five here then we'll copy our row and erase one so we have four columns paste it in one more time and erase two. So we have three columns. So to recap, five column row, four column row, and three column row, all set to have an equal width. So let's save, go back and refresh. Now we can see that it sizes each column equally. So it counts the amount of column inside each row and automatically give them the right size. Let's continue to grip with equal width and automatic resizing. We'll create a div tag with the classes UI equal width grid, same as before, and add our row also like we did before. Then we'll add a column.
column here with the segment as our content. And we'll copy this. So we have three columns and we'll copy the row as well. Now we want to find our second column in the first row to be a 10 wide column. And down here, we'll define our second row to be a 12 wide column. So the first and last column in each row should have automatic resizing and take up the rest of the space and divide it between them. So if this is 10, each of these should be three, so a total of 16. If this is 12, each of these should be two, so a total of 16 again. Let's say, go back and refresh. Now we can see that we have a grid with equal width on the columns with no set width and then the correct width for the columns where we set the width. So it's called a grid with equal width and automatic resizing. Let's continue to the next example, grid with floated columns. So we'll create a div tag with the classes UI and grid. Inside of this, we have the div tag with the class row. And then we'll add our first column, which will get the classes left floated four wide column. So this will be four wide and floated to the left. We'll add the content again. And the next one, next column, we'll get the classes right floated for wide column and get the same content. Let's save this, go back to the browser and refresh. Now we see that they have become floated to the left and right. Let's continue to the next example, grid with vertically stretched content. So we'll create a div tag with the classes UI3 column grid this time. And then we'll add our row. We'll add the class stretched row to make this row become stretched. Inside of this, we'll create a column. Put a UI segment with the text column. Then we'll copy this column two times. And in the second one, we'll double the content. And in the third one, we'll triple the content. So now we can see that the second and third column is taller than the first one. Let's look what happens when we use this stretched class, it becomes a grid with vertically stretched content. And we can see that the width of each column is defined up here as a three column grid. So each column will take up a third of the available width. Here we see the vertically stretched content for the first column and the second column as well. So it's the third column that is the tallest one with the most content that is defining the total height of this row and grid.